fish, a rich and precious resource that consumers often take for granted. But to safeguard fish stocks and to ensure a thriving fishing industry, we need to bring proper management to the way we monitor and control how we fish. As of the 1st of January 2015, the reformed European Common Fisheries Policy gradually requires all fishing boats to land virtually all the catches of the most important species of fish. Under EU regulations, these catches count against the fishermen's quota and should be fully documented and accounted for. The EU fisheries policy is uh, it's a huge leap forward. Uh, we have now decisions that uh, fish should be fished with quotas on a maximum sustainable level. All fish that are caught has to be counted against quotas and we have a landing obligation, also called the discard ban. And that is a huge transition from the previous policy. But when it comes to implementing the legislation, governments are dragging their feet. This policy is not being complied with, it's not being enforced, and there are no real initiatives to ensure that the policy will work. Currently, European fishing activity is policed by a combination of dockside monitoring, aerial surveillance, naval inspections and at-sea observers, which is expensive and ineffective. It's estimated that together they cover less than 1% of all fishing activity in Europe. It's extremely difficult to monitor all vessels at all times. This is essentially impossible due to the fact that we have plus 400 something vessels in that class. Uh, so if we have to have observers on board all of them at all times, it would never be commercially possible to do that. We've always had observers that we would take to sea periodically. Maybe once in a year, maybe maybe some years you wouldn't take them. And so the observer program has become more expensive and getting people to go to sea is, is a lot more difficult these days. Although the landing obligation is already in place, it is not yet being fully implemented by European governments. So the way it is at the moment, the current management is simply in breach uh, with the policy that has been decided. We all have an interest in having compliance and we all having, have an interest in documenting that we actually uh, count all the fish we take. And, uh, and, and one of the ways to do that, uh, or perhaps rather the way to do that, is by using remote electronic monitoring, REM. REM, or remote electronic monitoring, is an onboard system that records details of all fishing activity. Sensors on the hydraulic and winch systems monitor gear usage to indicate fishing activity. Cameras in key positions above and below deck record the processing and discard activity. And GPS logs the boat's position and movements. All the data is recorded on a central hard drive. It's being used in trials on a number of vessels around Europe. Werner Jensen is one of the Danish skippers taking part. And down here you can see we got one camera over here and one there and one there and we got one up on the shelter deck where the fish is coming in. So they can see everything what we're doing here on the working deck. As you can see the camera is pointing directly down here. In this area the, the fish is coming up here where we cut the fish that we are used and grate them in sizes and, and, and the rest is going outside over there where the, where the camera over here can see everything is going on uh, off the ship. So overboard, yeah. One of the aims of the landing obligation is to reduce the discarding of fish to an absolute minimum, although some limited exceptions are permitted. All the cameras and other sensors are time-locked to each other, generating a comprehensive log of all the fishing activity on each trip. When the vessel returns within range of a 4G or internet signal, the essential data of the fishing trip, from the GPS and the sensors, is transmitted to servers on the shore. 
the large files from the continuously recording cameras are downloaded from the hard drives, from where all the information can be directly accessed and analysed by the experts. At the Danish Fisheries Ministry, Hydrokor Bergson and his team are in charge of the REM project. So if we just watch the newest trip, we can just open it like that. So here on top we have uh, the blue line, which just indicates the speed of the vessel throughout the entire period, so from the 26th to the 30th. We can drag the mouse as we see the vessel leave the harbour here in Vilesen. We can see them uh, going over, sailing north. So as the vessel sails out and enters Norwegian waters, they will start fishing in this case. Instead of having to watch thousands of hours of footage, with experience, an analyst can find the most relevant section to review. So if we zoom in on one of these, uh, we can see here that we have the, the blue bars, which indicate that the gear is going out, and the red ones, which indicates that the gear is going back in. Uh, and we can use that uh, to estimate where the hull is. If we then look at the videos now that we see, we should be expecting some sort of discard, or at least some, well, not discard, but, but some processing going on here. And with that we see right, right here. So let's say that this fish right here is a, an illegal species to be discarded. We can just measure it up with these measuring tools, and we get an estimate of the fish size within approximately one centimeter. So we have an extremely precise tool to say that if, is it below minimum size, is it above minimum size? Uh, and in that sense, we can watch some percentage of videos of hauls uh, and then get an idea of how much this guy there is. Data provided by REM could also be of huge value to the wider scientific community. Data uh, is the foundation for the sustainable management of fisheries. Uh, and ISIS is dependent on data in its advisory process. Uh, so we have to say without data, no science. Uh, without science, no uh, scientific advice. It's impossible to manage what you, what you don't measure. And as long as we don't know what is actually caught, it is difficult to set quotas at the right levels. And it's difficult to have a responsible policy. With the full catch accountability, you will also be able to get the information about protected species being caught within an area, about vulnerable habitats within an area. And that's something which is in the interest of the fishing industry, of the managers and of the consumers. And it was the power of consumers that was largely responsible for the new EU policy of counting fish catches in part by applying pressure on retailers, such as UK supermarket giant Sainsbury's. So in 2011, we launched our sustainability plan. And when it came to fish, the target was to ensure that all the fish and seafood that we sold was sourced responsibly from fisheries and aquaculture organisations that were independently certified as sustainable. So there were, some, there were good reasons for taking that approach. One, that sustainable sources guarantees you security of supply into the future, so it's a sound economic reason for that. But also, from a Sainsbury's perspective, we tell our customers that we are a responsible business. So they expect us to do the right thing on their behalf. So something like remote electronic monitoring helps, would help the regulators and the scientists to understand what fish are being caught, whether that's by species or by size, where they're being caught and when they're being caught, and that will inform the fisheries management processes and ultimately deliver a better, more productive and ultimately sustainable fishery. So retailers see the value of REM, along with the scientists and government officials. But what about the people who are actually trialling the onboard camera systems? The fishermen themselves. When the government come with this opportunity to get the CCTV on board, of course we have a little bit nervous about it. Especially the guys on board the ship, they think that was not good. What, what would they use it for? Will, will they use it against this, you or, or with you? Yeah, the crew were like, yeah, what, cameras are we on the boat? Yeah, can we still, you know, 
uh, go about our business uh, usually uh, walking around with the clothes off and what have you so no they're, honestly they're not in the accommodation um, so yeah they're not intrusive at all and you really wouldn't know they're there and the crew they manage quite fine what the camera system can do for the fish dog is that the fishman will think a little bit different he will think more about selective gears and the way of fishing and in the area he's fishing because of you won't like to have a fish card when you're on this camera system, of course. So you make a more um, clean fishing. Last year, we were around 2% of this card in our fishing on the, on the cod fish, so, so that's nothing. I'm very open minded about it. I'm not a huge advocate of big pro at sea, but if this becomes something that enables the fishery to be better and to carry on growing and to be even more sustainable than it is already in the future, and I would say it's probably a step in the right direction. The argument for REM is strong. It's reliable, comprehensive, and extremely cost-effective. To monitor all Europe's fishing boats over 10 meters long with REM would cost around 69 million euros. That's less than 1% of the revenue of Europe's fishing fleet for a year at a cost of less than 4,000 euros per boat. For that, we get greater coverage than traditional monitoring systems and at a lower cost. Innovation is the key to the viability of the fishing industry. So I think it's an evolving process. I don't think it's going to radically change the shape of the industry in the next five years, per se, but I think in 20 years' time, uh, the fishing industry, particularly in the UK and in Europe, will have changed fairly fundamentally in the way it operates, for the better. I see the REM system as a whole having really extremely high potential of actually doing fantastic things with, with fishing and so on, because it sort of levels the playing field really out. Every, everyone goes under the same rules, and everyone has to abide by the rules that are applied. I think that we all have a joint interest in providing the best available advice, which will mean that we will end up with an ocean uh, that has been managed in a sustainable way, so that we have healthy fish stocks, so that we have healthy oceans. I believe IEM is the solution. It's easy to use. It's very reliable on a technical level. Right now, about 40% of cod catches in the North Sea are taken by vessels with REM, and, uh, but this is, this is being done on a trial basis. What we need now with the new policy is moving from the trial into the permanent management, and this is up to the member states to ensure that this happens. <laughs>